Hello, Brad here. Just to say we're super proud that the Friday 5pm podcast is sponsored by the Malt Miller, the UK's best home brew store. We use the Malt Miller for all of our homebrew experiments, as well as tapping them up for advice and binging on their awesome YouTube channel all the time. That's why whenever we release a homebrew video, we put a recipe kit live on the Malt Miller, so you can brew with the exact same amazing ingredients that we did. The same ingredients used by pro brewers. So alongside the Malt Miller's nitro flushed hops, cold stored yeast and milled to order malts, you can pick up recipe kits for our Five Points Best Bitter, Russian River West Coast IPA and now the fastest beer in the world, a hazy session IPA that goes from grain to glass in less than 48 hours. Sign up to their newsletter at tinyurl.com forward slash Malt Miller to get 5% off your first order. With the Malt Miller's amazing customer service and Johnny's 48 hour recipe, You could order the ingredients on a Monday and be drinking the beer by the weekend. Speaking of which, it's Friday. It's 5pm. So enjoy this week's Friday 5pm podcast. It's Friday, it's 5pm and I've got some terrible news for you if you haven't booked your ticket for Love and Beer. Mate, we've only bloody sold out. Way. We've sold out. How, with how many weeks be... to go? We've got weeks and weeks to go and we've sold out, I think Johnny. Si- six-ish? S- six-ish weeks? Six-ish weeks, yeah. Six-ish. Pretty Professionals amazing. Professionals would know this, but that, that, everyone <laughs> knows that's not who we are. Yeah. There's a festival soon, but you can't come anymore is essentially the opening to this, to well, this podcast. I think uh, potentially we may open up some tickets depending on weather. Is that is that what we're saying? We might have a little bit more capacity, maybe. Uh, yeah, maybe. What? There's that, and also the fact that inevitably there are going to be people that want to return their tickets, and we we can't do direct returns, but we can connect you with people. Yeah. Um, to sell on the tickets. So if you want to be on the, uh, was it the reserve list? I guess. Uh, if you email craftbeerboys at gmail dot com, I've got a list of people already. <laughs> as soon as we announced it was sold out, we we got about three emails from people going like, "What?" Yeah. Um, so you can join that list by uh, emailing craftbeerboys at gmail dot com, and there might be some more tickets coming out depending on weather. Yes, yes, we were we we have been discussing this week about the idea of doing a second session, haven't we, on a, on on the Friday? Uh, but yeah, we we need to see big demand for that. Yeah. So if you're interested in that, let us know on social or via email as well, because we need to sell to about 150. We have to half sell. Yeah, yeah. To to make not make a loss. Uh, so yeah, uh, if we could get like 150 we'll, we'll people, is there? Goes. I wonder if there's a way of like taking a sort of like uh, you know like a Kickstarter where if it doesn't happen, then you get your money back. That kind of thing. Like if you could do that with a festival date. And then if it doesn't, <laughs> if you don't reach the numbers, then you just go, sorry. Just cancel good. the event. Well, we're not canceling yeah. the event, but like... Because what we need in this world session. is less certainty. Well, yes, 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 Johnny. Yeah. Talking of absolute <laughs> certainty, Johnny, though, we have definitely, definitely earned a beer, mate. Our first ever beer festival that we've put on for ourselves. We bloody sold it out. I'm I'm we real have. chuffed with that. I'm giving myself a little pat on the back. It's great. Um, have you literally done that i hope you have literally well my back hurts from uh from carrying beer one strap with my camera bag yesterday uh i seem to have tweaked my old man back a little bit but and i have built a (laughs) table you took like four cans no i took uh there was there was a a four pack and then about i don't know another four about eight about eight beers so yeah not loads of beers johnny but one strap across one shoulder uh just seemed to Screw me. And I've lost my spectacles. I'm, I'm, I'm a two-strap nerd. It's, it's well, never... No. My, but my back's intact. I, I, I mean, I know load distribution is is where it's at, but I've taken my my camera bag, which is a Billingham, uh, almost like a kind of satchel, which only has one strap. It doesn't have the facility to turn into a two-strapper. So um, although it looks very stylish, Johnny, it's kind of screwed my back. Uh, this is terrible chat. Yeah. What? What? So we're going to crack a very special beer. We are. We are. We are. So the second batch ever of Now IPA has been brewed at meantime. There's going to be a third batch, mm. a third batch um, to the exact recipe of last year of the documentary, and that is being served at our festival, which you can't come to. Um, but uh, meantime, have decided wonderfully that they're going to do Now IPA again every single year. Uh, using the most exciting new hops from that season. Um, 
so that yeah it's now it's now a, an annual beer which is very exciting that we've we sort of had that impact um and this one i can't remember the name of the hop because it's experimental numbers it's cf which stands for charles farham and then a bunch of numbers yeah but um i believe i believe it's limey limey that should be some exciting. lime peel notes wow. coming coming through um let's do a bit of asmr and crack this tap oh yeah Oh yeah. Oof. Nice. Let's see, are you getting getting any lime? I I mean Oh, I am getting lime. I feel like I am getting a citrus sort of limey thing going on. Yeah. Straight out of the can. Yeah, it's definitely Jenny. in there. Mm. Yeah, man. That's interesting. How uh how an unexpected whiff that is off of this. It smells great. Yeah, yeah, really really limey and fresh and, and citrusy. I feel like there's a little bit more kind of um Maybe a little bit more caramel than the first batch. I'm not quite sure whether they, because um, I don't, I don't think it's Chevalier this time. It's all still British malt, but I don't think it's Chevalier. So maybe they've put a little bit of of Caro or Crystal or Munich or something in there to give a bit of character. And I'm picking up some of that as well. Yeah. Have you had a little sip yet? Oh yeah, I've had four or five. Sorry. Mm. See if I can't. If you can't see each other, we don't know when to time our sips correctly. Yeah, yeah. I think it's, I think it's tasting pretty good. It's quite juicy. Which is nice. Yeah, yeah, it is. Yeah, it's really nice. Mm. Um, I think they've taken the bitterness down just a touch as well. Famously, David Chester Darson in the documentary. Actually, no, maybe we edited that bit out where he called it a bitter mess. Uh, a bitter mess. <laughs> so maybe they've Did taken he? that on board. Oh dear. Yeah. Well, it's yeah. certainly way, way less bitter. Um, it's a nice beer, isn't it? It's very well balanced. I'd, I'd happily drink a fair amount of this. I think. Um, Really nice. So you can you you'll be able to drink our original recipe at the festival if you've got a ticket. So exactly, that's but you can exciting. buy v v two. I guess yeah. you can buy that online from meantime right now. That's awesome. Um, yeah, that's super. And cool. I, th- I think there's kegs going out to a couple of places, um, particularly the tap room, uh, and there will be kegs. So they're doing a, a small batch of of the original version. 10 heck so there will be some places that will be serving the original as well as our festival but after the festival so we'll we'll announce what those locations are going to be uh, as soon as we know um while we're talking about beers being served at the festival we also had a little road trip yesterday didn't we to brew the first one certainly did the mate. first collab quite a long quite a long road trip wasn't it really all the way down to brizzle i uh yeah you drove from uh up in your locale i met you in glamorous slough yeah um and <laughs> it's not all glam at the craft beer channel no 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 uh um, it's definitely not all glam in slough no although i must say very uh nice looking starbucks by the station not an indep- <laughs> not an independent johnny i would have preferred an independent coffee shop uh i did ring you to see if you wanted a coffee when you when you picked me up because i thought you might have been tired yeah and the answer if you're in a starbucks is is usually going to be no no i actually went in because uh there aren't any... Well, I, I don't think there are any toilets on the Elizabeth line because it's basically a tube that goes to Reading, which is crazy when you think about it. It's like a, a London Underground tube that goes all the way to Reading. Mental. But I really needed a wee. And then uh, the only place I could think of was Starbucks when I came out of the station. And I sort of... You know, when you go into a coffee shop, you kind of got to look like you're going to buy a coffee. So you don't want to just like straight away run to the toilet. Did you like full on fake? Like yeah. look at the board. I didn't stroke do that. your chin. I so I was wearing my my white uh jeans, my white denims, Johnny. So I let you know, sort of going for my yacht captain vibes. So I thought, well I look sort of like might have a bit of money, I might be buying coffee. So I just went straight and sat on a sofa. <laughs> sat on a sofa a couple of minutes till I blended in. Then I got up, uh went around the back. There were no signs for the toilet, went around the back. And uh, I saw a steaming bucket as I uh, went oh, around God. the corner. Steaming it was, Johnny. And then uh, a very sheepish looking um, Starbucks employee came out of the toilets and uh, said, you can't go in there. You can't go in there. It's 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 uh, it's a minefield. It's a disaster zone. It's, it's, out, it's out of use. It's yeah, out of use. It's out of say. use, Johnny. Yeah. So um, I had then had to... Uh, hold the wee wee for about another hour and 40 minutes or something in the car uh mm. so i was pretty busting by the time we got there but that was great when it when we got there man such a great day of filming <laughs> as always Finally the longest there. drop intro to <laughs> brewing a fest beer with lost and grounded mostly a tale of 
<laughs> you failing to go for a wee in a Starbucks. I know. Yeah. Normally they lock the doors, don't they, at these sort of things, or they have like a code. But why are we going back there? I don't, don't... Know. I don't know. We were at Lost and Grounded. We great. were very excited to be at one of the world's best uh, lager brewers, mm. and we made a fest beer with them. Um, without giving too much away, I'm going to give it all away. It's all English malts. Same. It's a uh, Warminster, all floor malted, Czech style malt, and Munich malt. Uh, then Tetnanger, uh, so a classic German. Uh, Aroma, aroma hop. It was bitter with Magnum, um, so it's going to be, I think, almost indistinguishable from the classics. Although knowing Lost and Grounded, much much drier, mm. um, but with English ingredients, which is very exciting. Super cool. Other than the Tetanger and the uh, English malts, I should say. I, yeah, I think they're some so, of the nicest people in beer as well. There, they're so yeah. so lovely and hospitable and kind and good to their stuff and. I just excited to brew yeah. and brew with other people as well. Yeah. That was, you know, it's so lovely. Like the much of the team stopped and had lunch with us, and much of the team were like there for the whole day. You know, hanging out with us, helping us with the filming, chatting away. It's it's a really a really wonderful vibe that they have there. And if you haven't been to the tap room, it's ace as well. Like you are right next to the brewery, which thankfully isn't running at the weekends because it's noisy as hell. Mm. Um, and and you know you're really in the thick of it, and the the staff are incredible. It's brill. It's brill. We had a great time. Yeah. I lost my uh, my glasses on the way home, as I told you just before the pod, so I'm a bit upset. Uh, Moss got uh, spectacles if you're out there and you want to send me some expensive uh, replacement glasses on the house. That'd be nice. Thank you. <laughs> or if you're on the Elizabeth line <laughs> or in my car yeah. and you see the glasses. That'd also be good. Uh, let us know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, um, so yeah, that that's the first brew that we've done. That we're doing ten collaboration brews. In case you didn't know, that's the first one. We're filming nine of them and putting contents out, so you'll be able to see all of these adventures. But on Monday, we're off to Sweden to visit on the Poyo again oh. to brew Brad's breakfast. Although it won't be called that. There's a very um on um, the Poyo I'm, name. I'm going to petition for it to be called Brad's breakfast. Still, it's uh, it's you know they should, they've got to Johnny. They've got to do it. They won't do it, but they they've got to do it. I'm going to petition hard. We'll maybe we'll find what Swedish for breakfast is or something. Going to get and, and political on on them, Johnny. You know, like real real graft. Uh, for yeah. My, for my. Uh, it's you all my, over. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. I'm looking forward to seeing that in action. Talking of political, Johnny. Um, oh yeah, go on. What about uh, GBBF? Yeah, I mean GBBF, the Great British Beer Festival. People. In the beer industry, a lot of people sort of, we all go through this phase of going, oh, I'm not going to go this year because it's the same every year. This year, <laughs> good Lord, it, it all went off. Yeah. The first year that we didn't go, that you could go, <laughs> um, in a long time, it all kicked off. So Rishi Sunak, mm. Prime Minister of, the, of Great Britain, turns up, gets sworn at a lot as far as I can tell from the news reports, but he used it as a photo op to promote the fact that he's supposedly lowered duty mm. on beer in the UK. That's not what he's done. He's put it up by 10% because it's now it was linked to inflation, the new duty. So it's not only gone up by 10%, but he's also literally raised the duty on pretty much anything under 3.5%. So lying through his teeth uh, and trying to hang out with all the people that he screwed over was quite, quite the image and went down as you'd kind of expect. Mm. Um, lots of people on online were saying, you know, Camera and and Siba and all these other sort of lobbying firms, they need good relationships with with politicians. Um, and I, you know, yeah, they should be sat down in a room with him and having serious discussions about how the British beer industry is entirely broken from a structural point of view. Shouldn't really be allowing him to have a photo op, though. No way. No way. Um, I don't think that's very helpful because whatever happens, it looks... You know, what they've done is... Because there was a specific brewery being poured in the photos. There was a specific uh, sponsored bar that he was pouring at. And they've made those breweries, that pub and the staff complicit in that, mm. which I don't think is fair. Nope. Um, when all of them would be very much against what, what Sunak's government has done. So a poor, poor call from camera. Yeah, um, and Seba jumping in supporting that was a bit disappointing as well. Um, um, is it the, how many camera members? Because they're they're quite a powerful sort of lobbying organization. It's like is it one hundred or two hundred thousand? Hundred sixty thousand. Yeah, generally. so like yeah, one to two hundred thousand. Yeah, it's Europe's biggest consumer interest group. 
there you go. So I mean, they've got they've got some some sort of power behind them, haven't they? So if he can uh, make them feel important, you know what I mean, at their biggest event, could, could be a lot of votes. Well, it could, it you know, it could <laughs> make the camera members think, oh, the government cares about us, when really mm. I I didn't give a fuck about any of us, and it was just an opportunity to get some beery stuff in the background uh when they've 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 uh laid the smack yeah. down on the industry yet again well, yeah and it's the second time that they've done this because when they introduced draft relief which was aiming to make drinking in pubs a little bit cheaper compared to drinking in supermarkets they didn't do half enough to actually make that happen but when they released that they said that it wouldn't count on 30 liter kegs they said anything on 40 liters and above and then promptly went to I think it was Four Pure Brewery for the for the photo shoot, mm. which only serves in thirty liter kegs. So it's like we've gone to a place that is literally untouched by this by this new uh, new bit of legislation. So they're just uh, just mi- misrepresent whatever side of politics you're on. It's the beer industry is being misrepresented and abused and exploited currently. Um, but that wasn't even the most controversial thing that happened at GBBF Bradley. Go on. The most controversial was that Green King Abbott Ale yes. won silver <laughs> in the Champion Beer of Britain competition. Oh, so wow. of all to to put this into context, like there is no there's absolutely no chance that this was a fix, as lots of people online have claimed because Green King are a big brewery sponsor a lot of uh camera stuff. Because what happens is local the local camera branches judge all the different beer styles and the winners of those regional competitions mm. get sent through to the uh, county competitions the county competitions are then judged and winners of that are then selected and the winners of that go into the annual great british great G- champion beer of britain competition and then the winners of that are judged by more different people and they win so Abbott Ale has come through a lot to win that and to have orchestrated that kind of corruption would take mission impossible style infiltration uh, um, i mean i'm not putting it past <laughs> i'm not putting it past them <laughs> past green king hey yeah. maybe that can't maybe. be that good surely that i mean there's so many brewers right at that thing how's that i'm sorry well, i don't want to be down on it but like no, 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 no. It's good. We should we should have these discussions because it's important. And we've talked about this. I, th- I did a video literally on beer judging that, that tried to sort of mm-hmm. explain this. Beer judging, you're not finding the best beer. Yeah, That's not what beer judging competitions are about. And you know, maybe they should be, but unfortunately, finding the best beer is just too subjective. What you're looking for is the best beer brewed to... The beer that's brewed best to style. Yeah, yeah. So what you're looking for is the best bitter, the best amber, the best porter, according to the definitions that camera have given you for that. So the first thing that you do when you're judging these big competitions, and I've judged quite a few of them, is you're looking for flaws. So any beer that has any sort of flaw is immediately out, really. Got you. You know, it might make it through a round or two, but it's never going to win. Because flawed beer just can't. And that could be, you know, all the classic flaws, diacetyl, acetaldehyde, um, all this kind of stuff. But it also could just be as simple as, say, like, you know, in a New England IPA category, it could just be some earthiness from the dry hop. Mm. Could be a bit of greenness because it was so fresh, you know, and that's enough. So generally, the beers that win these competitions or certainly get through to the final rounds are the most flawless technically, not the most delicious yeah not subjective. the most delicious most exciting yeah uh, now yeah the the interesting thing is that when we or when i did the blind taste test of bitters and put abba ale in there it was horribly flawed mm. uh, it, i think it had diac and acetaldehyde so the other thing you have to remember is that breweries literally and i've been there on the days in fact when we were at lost and grounded they were literally picking which batches were going to be going into competitions Right. They will select their best batch or even some brewers will take it a step further and brew a specific batch for that competition. That so is, that's kind of disingenuous. I feel like it should be not up to them. It should be selected by 
someone independent. Well, but think of the uh, think of the well, the organization that would go yeah, into yeah, like yeah. A, having a mystery shopper go in. So so yeah, I mean it, that that beer that Abbott ale that won would have been the most technically accomplished and probably you know using you know you know potentially even a slightly different recipe but you know yeah. the absolute best that Abbott ale has ever been would have been presented there and Abbott ale at its absolute pinnacle best is an all right beer mm-hmm. and as i've said you know all right beers are perfectly likely to win big awards because they're flawless even if they're not that delicious you know um so all these people that are sort of saying it's a crying shame or it's a fix um it's neither it's just you know well done to green king and in terms of drinkers just don't be influenced by it if you don't like Abbott ale don't drink it just keep drinking your wonderful but slightly flawed beers you know like i know like harvey's best which you know definitely has a little hint of diacetyl every time i drink it but it's all part of the character um but in a judging situation particularly when it's blind because all these judgings are blind i would pick up you know i would have if I were doing an official judging, because I judged Harvey's very well in our bitter, but that's because A, I recognised it, and B, I was trying to look more subjectively for my favourite bitter. Yeah. If I was judging in a camera or a receiver competition, you'd immediately mark that down. You know, there's there's no real chance of that beer ever winning a, a big national beer brewing competition because it's just too too unusual, too out there, too far out of the parameters. It's... it's uh... <sighs> It really, I think it shines a light on the, the the sort of brewing judging, sorry, beer judging being slightly flawed model. If if something, you know, uh, as mediocre potentially as as Abbott Ale is is bringing home the bacon, then. But the thing is, know. I mean, Abbott Ale is one of the best selling beers in the country. Some people love it. Yeah, yeah. So I try not to be too. No, I mean, I'm, I'm looking at, I think you know, probably on, is on Google right, right now there. and it's it's got good ratings from, you know, reviewers and such. But uh, I guess maybe, yeah, it's not our bag necessarily. But um, uh, yeah, cause when we drink, we're looking for character, right? That's yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that's what we love and what we look for. Whereas not everybody's looking for that. They're looking, you know, like lager drinkers are looking for the cleanest, crispest, coldest thing. Yeah. Some ale drinkers are looking for the caramelliest breadiest thing yeah yeah and we look for that but lots of other things on top having just watched oppenheimer this week i'm not gonna go on a big derail johnny but what is this link go on but you know like you're saying potentially it was a slightly different recipe it's definitely the best version that they're ever going to make of abba ale they could have pumped a lot of resources into this particular batch all of that stuff oppenheimer uh the the nazis were developing uh heavy water you know kind of uh, a um nuclear weapon i think it was 12 to 18 months before the americans in earnest tried to catch up and the only hope sort of america had of catching up was putting all the best minds into this one place and focusing all of their efforts into a single idea not compartmentalizing but just going all in on a single place a single time uh with the result a terrifying disturbing result of, of something awful but they achieved Wait, we it. talk about abba ale winning silver or the, <laughs> well, the bomb still here <laughs> good one good one but um <laughs> arguably both um but you know the, the the way you accomplished something like that so it could have been very strategic by green king they could have gone right we're going to win it this year, lads and ladies. We're going to put like X amount of money into it, X amount of focus into it. We're going to drill down on everything. We're going to make it the best we possibly can, right? And we know we can send this batch off and we're going to be proud of it, which is, you know, that's great. And you should be proud of every batch of sending off. But what I'm what I'm trying to say is like, they should be doing that every time, you know? So that one you had that was riddled with Dayak and the rest of it, shouldn't be going out shouldn't be going out of the brewery man um Mm -hmm. so it's it's a kind of it's a little bit of a rigged game in my opinion because you know you can present something that isn't true to your everyday product necessarily uh and you're seeing it in a best case scenario whereas most of the time it's not being received in a best case scenario it's also in a clear glass fucking bottle isn't it 
<laughs> which is mad. Yeah. Uh, I mean, there is in Cannes as well, but I don't know. Do you know if they were judging it? Uh, what format they were judging it's all, it? It would have been cask. Cask. So it's, okay, so it's all cask. All right, fair dues. Yeah. Well, okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to retract slightly some of my problems with it um, and just celebrate the fact that cask is being celebrated, Johnny. And I guess, you know, it should be the well, big the, boys um, that, that can kind of come out uh, the, the gates with something great, you know? So I mean, yeah, that it very much does favour the, the big boys with, with labs and, yeah. you know, endless batches to choose from and all that. The, the the point that quite a lot of people made online as well was, you know, talking about the idea of, you know, the cask is being celebrated. It's We should really be talking about Ellen Brewery, who won mm-hmm. with their incredible, incredible porter. You know, not a huge brewery. Second time I think they've won it. You know, that is an unbelievable beer. Amazing. <clears throat> and that that should be what we're all talking about, really. And Abbott Ale is sort of a, a distraction from that to some extent. Yeah, I guess that is that you know journalists in general are going to go after, and and all of us, you know, in the in the bubble. Well, I, th- I think the gonna... journalists were out defending <laughs> and oh, saying, right. no, 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 this yeah, isn't the yeah. important thing. It, it's you know, it's it's the the drinkers that were surprised because most people that really care about these awards, you know, they're not drinking, uh, not drinking Abbott Ale. No, well, okay. Maybe we need to maybe we need to have our minds changed. We'll go to Green King, and see what their processes are. If if they are, you know, banging out hey, some maybe. some great stuff. Who knows? Maybe. Mm. Um, yeah. So that that's all the beer news this week. Loads of beer news, all from one place that me and Brad decided together not to go to this year. So that's how hot we are on the pulse of, <laughs> of the beer world that we literally walked away from the biggest news story. Uh, possibly of the year. Uh, this week's video was a bit of a story, though. Yeah, it's doing well. It's doing well. And it, it was... It's doing very well, and it was one of the most requested videos, so I'm yeah. glad it has done. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, definitely a, so this... a, a success story there, isn't there, amongst the crop? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, what I love about these blind taste tests is when you get some winners that you might not have expected mm. or that you, we haven't covered before, it makes me go, oh, we really need to get up to vocation, essentially. Yeah. Because they were a brewery that, when they first came out, everyone was very excited about them. There was some great car scale coming out. And then they went almost straight into supermarkets. And everyone was a bit like, oh, that's not really what I expected. Are they trying to be a really big volume brewery? Um, And the answer is that, yes, they were trying to be a really big volume brewery. But they have done incredible things along the way. And made, you know, that that beer would stand up to anything coming out of any of the really hypey New England guys. And I, I cannot believe that that was in a supermarket and that it it hadn't shown much sign of being in a supermarket either no in terms of being tired it's a remarkable brewing achievement and a couple of the comments actually have said that they stopped buying vocation because it was inconsistent so maybe i got a bit lucky uh maybe they knew i was coming and they put the freshest uh just <laughs> just like green king did put the freshest batch straight into stevenage tesco where i went but um yeah, just an un- unbelievable beer. And the Heathen was great as well, but I really did expect that. Um, I, I know that they can make very, very shelf-stable and very tasty beer because when I buy beer from supermarkets, it's always Faith. Um, yes. that That's my little stock-up. Uh, that or, or Pilsner or Kel. Well, um, or like, if, you're, if you're in a Waitrose, Johnny, uh, Keller Pils. Well, yeah, we know. Yeah, in your little stubby cans. Mm-hmm. Big fan of but that. But I rarely shop in a Waitrose, sadly. Me, neither do I, mate. <laughs> Last time I shopped in a Waitrose was going to Stonehenge uh, a few months back in May, and I got some yeah, stubbies Yeah, but everyone stopped off. Everyone there had been to Waitrose, <laughs> even a Harry Krishnas. It was, mate, it was in the service station nearby, so I'm not going to feel bad about that. It was, uh, it was a legit... Well, you should never feel bad about shopping at Waitrose. Yeah. I was just saying it's very much the demographic. Oh no! I mean, it was new age travellers and stuff for sure. It was. It wasn't people who were yeah, shopping they all in. Shop at Waitrose. Nah, definitely not. Yeah. There was there was all sorts. Yeah. <laughs> you can tell you yourself. Think, you think they're going into Tesco's and Morrison's and? I don't think they're necessarily going into any of those. Uh, supporting them, new age travellers maybe, probably not. Um, but yeah, hippies and shit maybe, middle class hippies for sure. Um, you're going to get your higher welfare products there, which. Any hippie worth their salt is going to appreciate, you know, something having a better life or, you know, something having less pesticides and shit sprayed on it before you consume it. 
Um, so I yeah, probably did probably some of them ones the moneyed ones shopping Waitrose for sure. <laughs> Glad we've established that. Mm. Um, so yeah, this week was my blind supermarket IPA taste test. Mm. The results of Vocation winning and Northern Monk coming second and Syrah not being far behind um, weren't of great surprise. I was just surprised by how good those beers were. I thought the general scoring would be a lot lower. And straight out of the gate, Siren was the first one that I drank, and it was it was a great, great beer. Um, and, you know, I'd always... My argument with supermarkets, because I don't necessarily buy into this idea that buying from supermarkets is... Buying beer from supermarkets is immoral. Like, we all use supermarkets. We have to. Why is beer any more immoral to buy uh, at a supermarket than any other? Um, and increasingly, there's lots of small, independent, and exciting breweries in there. Um, I'd always made the argument that it's just better to support small businesses, and they'll look after the beer better. But actually, the beer was in all right condition, mm-hmm. most of it. And I'd say at least half of the really bad ones were bad coming out of the brewery to start with. Uh, judging by the flaws that were in them. So, yeah, impressed. Impressed by what's on the shelves in UK supermarkets. Um, and I think I think a lot of people in the comments were as well. Did you find lots of exciting comments? Yeah. Uh, I had a good one from Ethan Griffiths. He said, uh, this is really interesting and relevant one for me. I definitely can't afford to be spending how much I'd like to at my local craft beer shop. So these supermarket options are my go-to for most weeks slash months. Uh, so great to know which to go for and which to avoid. So I think you do, you've do. you done a bit of service there. Like you say in the video, you know, we should all be spending in, in, in our local stores to keep our high streets alive and all of that if we can. But when times are a bit more difficult, um, sometimes, uh, you know, you just you just want like a session beer or something. Maybe you're buying a four pack and... You know, maybe you, 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 you're you out of hours or something and you're just in a supermarket. and Yeah, I mean, yeah. it always has its place and its function. Mm-hmm. Um, and I, yeah, I'm glad, I'm glad that's helpful. I mean, what I really learned is that the breweries that you would know and trust in an independent bottle shop are the same as what you would trust in uh, in a supermarket. Like, And that, that should make a lot of sense, but you kind of assume that they'll all be tainted. But actually... You know, the the guys that we know and love were, were very good within it. And the ones where I was like, I don't even know who brewed this, were generally terrible. That Tooth and Claw one, which I think was, was Robinson's, was it? Mm-hmm. Uh, was, 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 you know, should never have left the brewery. Um, and uh, I won't be trying anything by that that brand ever again. Um, yeah, I, I didn't pick out any specific comments, but I did enjoy like quite a few people talking about how like um, confused Americans essentially, which is <laughs> a pretty common thing to come across in our comment section. But um, lots of people saying, like, I do not understand why the British don't like buying their beer from supermarkets. Like that's just the norm in the U S you know, I've been, when I was in Texas, you know, Jester King were in, were in uh, Whole Foods, mm. you know, in big quantities, you know, it's just the norm over there. Um, so it's a bit of a weird British sensibility, this whole we don't buy beer from supermarkets. And I think, you know, it's because the the beer market is incredibly competitive here in the UK and beer is incredibly expensive by the pint. So supermarkets are really undercutting that. So it is it is a se- more serious situation over here. But still, yeah, lots of Americans wrinkling their brows that, that made me chuckle. Uh, I was glad that lots of people came with me on the Strawpedo Reefs. Um <laughs> I'm, I'm glad we all went through that collectively as a as a nation. If you went to went to uni or to a spoons, um, just gnarly stuff that we used to put in our bodies. I've, and I, I'm glad it wasn't just my friendship group. I've never drunk a uh, uh, reef, and I don't think I've ever strawpedoed anything um, in my life. So what, what were you drinking in the nightclubs of your early twenties? Oh, uh, I used to drink a lot of uh, like cheap mixers with 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 like we're talking going out oh, so you were yeah, taking yeah. on like the double vodka and coke deals yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Nine I'd be, I'd, 9 p.m i'd be doing those things i used to go to candy box nightclub indie club in london and they, they used to have a deal that was like a double spirit mixer for something like two pounds it was insane how cheap it was yeah horrifying uh, yeah. i used to drink what did I, I used to drink all sorts of stuff like from rum and coke through to I seem to remember drinking whiskey and lemonade 
at, at certain points. Uh, I kind of worked out which... Like Southern Comfort and Lemonade? That was a well-known Yeah, drink. I get it. it wouldn't, mate, it was definitely not Southern Comfort. I'm not even sure it was whiskey, to be honest, but... Um... Well, Southern Comfort isn't whiskey. Right. Is it bourbon? What is a Southern Comfort? No, no, it's like a... It's Different a thing inside. Whiskey-based liqueur, Oh, right, yeah. Well, it was, it was it's cheap off brand to hell and... shit, yeah. Uh, I used to go there a lot. A little bit later, I used to go to Bunker Club in Deptford, and they had, that was run by an old, like a really old couple, probably in their sixties or something. They had a similar deal to that, and that was sort of full of Goldsmith students jiggling about on a dance floor. Um, and Trash Nightclub, I used to go there. Errol Alcans, mythical. I mean, you can't remember what you did yesterday, and yet yeah. you can remember the names of all of these clubs and what you drank in them. Yeah, well, I mean, they're all they're all pretty. Well, I don't know about Bunker Club, but Trash and Candy Box are way high up on the list of like legendary early two thousands indie discos. Um, yeah, see, we didn't have that at Exeter. Yeah, we didn't yeah. have anything legendary. Well, at all, Trash used to have like I've seen like Yeah Yeah Yeah's play there. And uh, I think LCC, LCD Sound System play there. It used to be the cream of the crop of when they, you know, these bands came to London, they play this nightclub. It was it was mad. Um, it was great. But I, I couldn't, yeah, I think I didn't really drink a lot of beer there. If I was drinking beer, it would have been uh, something out, you know, like a rolling rock or something shit like that because yeah that had had a moment in the sun yeah back then that was sort of like the you know the kind of pla- paps sort of thing or maybe yeah 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 uh he was like the, the hips hipster beer that was yeah terrible. yeah exactly terrible beer terrible beer so kind of gave him a swerve and then red stripe took over i think from mm, paps true or did red stripe get knocked off by pat can't remember the order but yeah weirdly hipsters go like oh this brand's cool now um, I liked it when Vice came out with their own hipster beer, which wasn't very good. Called and brewed by AB InBev. Yeah, uh, Old Blue Lost or something. Cool and edgy as as it gets. <laughs> yeah. Although I did used to, I did used to go to the Old Blue Lost as well. I must say, uh, and drink terrible hipster beers back in the day, Johnny. Yeah, it was good fun back in your Nathan Barley days. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, there's another set of comments I wanted to address, which is lots of people. A, asking why I'm swirling beer, and the answer to that is because that gets the volatile compounds, the aromatic compounds, out of suspension into the glass so that I can appraise them better. But lots of people going like, swirls his beer three times, then says it's undercarved. Now, firstly, the first thing to point out is because I did it for every single beer, lots of them weren't undercarved, Mm -hmm. even after three swirls. So, firstly, that statement's nonsense. Secondly, uh... Do, like just pouring a beer would knock all the carbonation out if three swirls ruins it you know like these people i don't know pedants in you pedant essentially i'm saying pedants on youtube pipe down oh shots fired yeah that's all i got to say about that shots so, fired. somebody somebody said i really enjoy this channel but i'm not sure that calling yourself a beer expert is a good look I was like, haven't we earned that? I mean, I don't know if I've earned that. I think you've earned that. You I are, think you've earned that. You are considered a beer judge. You do judge on many things all the time. And you've written, you know, many books on, on beer. So Many I, leather-bound books. I have many leather-bound books. And, you know... Like, I'm not calling myself, like, the world's mahogany. foremost beer expert. I'm no. just, I just... I know quite a lot about beer now. I don't know. That yeah, one hurt. yeah. I think I think you that could one. call yourself a beer expert at this point, Johnny. Thanks, friend. Yeah, yeah, you're welcome, friend. Yeah. You're welcome, friend. <laughs> um, yeah, I think uh, that's a, probably about it from video. It's doing well, isn't it? People are really loving it. Uh, I, I I I had a comment from Andrew B one seventy. Great to see love and hate form so well. It might have been one of my first Nipers years ago, and I still rank it alongside some of my favourites. From Polly's, Verdant, and Sure Shot. So yeah, he's agree. really putting it up there, which is it's cool to know that, you know, there are such great beers available in a seed market that probably, well, definitely haven't been cold chained and are just sat on a shelf. But somehow, uh, Vocation have put a little bit of magic in every one of those cans by the sounds of it. <laughs> they have. They really have. And, you know, if, if you're a beer lover and you really worry about the amount of money you're spending, mm-hmm. those two beers would be my app. Well, if you like New England IPA, um, that would be my absolute tip. Like those two beers are as good as the stuff you'll get in bottle shops. And obviously you can't play the game of like trying lots of different beers, learning about hops and stuff that we get to do by 
buying an independence and trying lots of different beer but if you're just looking for a fridge filler that's a big old juicy ipa those two beers are just great great stuff um and i did not expect that going into the blind taste test at all and that's why we do them because it you know it knocks us on the head and reminds us that we don't know everything about beer that we're not necessarily beer ex <clears throat> no i'm gonna let it go <laughs> um yeah, so do watch that if you haven't watched it and all of the other blind tests, taste tests that we've done. We'd love to hear your thoughts on other taste tests that you'd like to see us do because you never quite know what's going to hit, what's going to land and what's going to be interesting. So I'd love to hear some ideas. We've had some great ones uh, in the comments. More requests also for like doing just a pale ale one or a lager one from supermarkets. I don't want to go too far down that road. Um, like we should be supporting independent bottle shops but I will get round to them eventually and in the meantime let's do some fun styles let me know maybe not imperial stouts or barley wines um, I need to function uh, but I'm, I'm up for most things so yeah that's all we've got time for this week uh, first before I give you quick reminders about some things big shout out to Vessel Yes. Uh, one of the UK's premier bottle shops who uh, left our Patreon and rejoined three months ago, told me they'd rejoined, and I didn't tell Brad to add them to the intro ident. So they have been our Patreon for the last three months. We love them and respect them and thank them for that and h- apologise humbly yes. for leaving them off. Yeah, for very that sorry about that, guys. Uh, we love you. We love you. Sorry, 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 sorry. So sorry, sorry. I think if the, I think they've got an online shop, so if somebody could go and buy a load of beer from them and make up for it, that'd be great. And and then put in the <laughs> yeah. comments, we're buying this as a result of uh, yeah. craft beer boys. Yeah, please, please. We're, don't we're paying the them. money that craft beer channel should really be giving you in a refund. That's it. Yeah, that that seems like a, an ethical and sensible way of of resolving this issue. Nice. Yes. Um, so yeah. So next week uh, we've got our live podcast. So that will be on YouTube. We'll be hosting it. That will start, I believe, at five at uh, six p.m. Yeah, I need to double check that, but all of the details will be all over our social and on YouTube when that's live. Uh, that does mean that there won't be a Friday five p.m. podcast that night. Uh, we will put the live recording live the next day, so it'll be a Saturday five p.m. So next week, if you don't watch us on YouTube, is that potentially our next week's upload video as well? Uh, good question. We don't actually have anything for next week, so maybe we'll say yes, given that we're in Sweden. Mm. Well, I'm gonna I'm yeah. gonna be trying to film a lowbrow uh, over the next couple of days. I've just been building a table. Oh, I this see you're morning, wiggling Johnny. out. Well, you're I'm not wiggling, wiggling away. No, I'm not wiggling out. You're being a wiggler. <laughs> I'm not wiggling away. <laughs> I'm not wiggling away, Johnny. I'm just getting my courage up. You see, I'm I'm very right. shy. I'm a shy man. It takes me a lot to. I've been rewatching the lowbrows. You see, and thinking, how did I do that, Johnny? I got the I got the I got the fear. So that was why I suggested having a beer but uh with this as well so I can uh get a little bit of Dutch courage or uh British courage from these British hops. But um, Well let let's yeah. all send Brad good vibes today. Oh yeah, cool. Maybe some good messages. He's gonna smash it, he's gonna take a breath. Yeah. He's gonna so. remember that like second, third, fourth, fifth take is always terrible. It's usually the first or the last take mm. that you nail. Yes, but and I'm... you just Beautiful cool boxes, Johnny. It's what we're doing. It's what we're doing. Beautiful yeah, cool boxes. Yeah, and you're talking boxes. about something you're incredibly passionate about. Yeah, man, I love so it. So you're going to nail it. Love it, love yeah. it, love it. Yeah, so mm. it's going to be fine. So, yes, we might use that Friday one as our upload. It will be a good hour long. Um, but if not, there might be. There might be the next episode of Low Brown. Mm. Uh, and if not, it will be the week after. So you won't have to wait long, I'm sure. Sweet. Uh, yeah, so there we go. We are in Sweden on Monday. Uh for those listeners in Sweden, we might be trying to organise a meetup. We still need to establish exactly the timings of what we're doing, but if there will be one, we'll announce that on social Stockholm, in, in our Discord. Somewhere forum. about in Stockholm. Yeah, somewhere in Stockholm. Yeah. So we are going to work on that this afternoon and, and get it get it sorted. Um, yeah, and then uh, we'll see. We'll be at LCBF all of. Well, I'll be at LCBF Friday and Saturday. Brad will be there at least Friday. Mm-hmm. Um, so come say hi if you're coming. Otherwise, yeah, we'll we'll see you for the next upload and Friday 5 p.m.'s resumption the week after. Uh, yeah, love and beer. The Bubble and Friday 5 p.m. podcasts are brought to you by the nerds behind YouTube's craft beer channel. 
You can watch over 400 mini documentaries at youtube.com slash the craft beer channel. And if you love what we do, support us via Patreon and get access to merchandise and our amazing Discord forum, a positive and welcoming space for everyone who loves beer, food and home brewing. Love and beer. Love and beer.